Ladies and gentlemen, Panther Productions is very proud to present and very excited to present Mr. Adriano Emperado, the founder of the Kajikempo system. This is a rare opportunity and we truly hope you enjoy this interview. It will give you great insight into the mysterious Kajikempo system. Welcome, Master. Oh, pleased to meet you. I'm and glad welcome, to be here. Yeah. And welcome Gary Forbach, one of his top black belt students. Master, let's start at the very beginning. When and where were you born? Oh, I was born in Honolulu, Hawaii. Uh, my name is Adriano D. Amparado. Director, it stand, D stands for Director, which was my mother's maiden name. My father's name is Juan Panis Amparado. He's from Cebu, Fernando. Philippines. My mom is Severina <coughs> Navarro Directo, born in La Union, Philippines. I was born in Honolulu in the Kalihi District. Mm -hmm. What year was that, sir? Oh, 1926, June 15. Uh, I don't know whether it was <laughs> morning or night, in midwife, you know, in, in those days, yeah. And, um, and when besides you... myself, I have a uh, six in a family total, seven total. Yeah. Seven brothers and sisters? No, uh, one, four, four sisters, no. Four sisters, three brothers, three boys, yeah. Oh, a big family. That's me, my brother Joe, and my oldest brother Larry, yeah. Mm -hmm. And are they still in Hawaii? Uh, no, my sister died, my brother Joe died, passed away, you know. I guess you heard about it in the newspaper how he got killed, you know. That was way back in the uh, 50s. Could you tell us about that? What happened? <clears throat> well, after training nights, see, my policy is to t I tell the instructors and the students, go home straight. After training, go home straight. That was after maybe about 10 o'clock in the night after we got through training at Palama. But I didn't know his girlfriend worked in a bar. He go there and meet him. And the boys go over there, see. So he went over and waited till the girlfriend got through work. At the same time, one of the students named Walter Godin went over to have a few beer. That while he was having beer, three guys, three local guys came up to have a drink too. And they were just looking at each other, you know, eyeing up. So Godin told, told them, hey, what are you looking at? I owe you any yeah. money, you know, some, you know, trouble, you know. Right. Then they started to start you know, argue, and then my brother went over and stopped. You know, he acted as the bouncer too because the owner of the bar was his friend. I see. Then <clears throat> my brother bought them a beer. They shook hands and everything. Then my brother went back and talked to his girlfriend. Then <clears throat> the uh, Godin started to leave. The three guys followed him outside the bar. I see. That's, they call it the pink elephant. Huh? Yeah, it was the pink elephant. And that was in uh, Aala and Britannia Street in Honolulu. Uh, that was in the olden days. And uh, <clears throat> then they started to push each other around outside. So the, one of the waitresses called my brother to go outside. So when my brother went out and <clears throat> pushed the three person out and pushed Godin back in the bar, he turned his back and pushed Godin. <clears throat> one of the guys stabbed my brother in the kidney. Oh. <clears throat> my brother thought Terrible. that the guy punch him. So he turned around, he hit the guy. <clears throat> the guy fly about maybe about maybe about six feet, you know, slide. Yeah. And <clears throat> the other guy came and stabbed him on a heart. Oh, you know, about wow. three stabs. <clears throat> and Godin saw that. And instead of Godin stay there to help, he took off and the three guys chased him. So my brother was injured and the girlfriend, how stupid can she be? Instead of calling an ambulance, she put back team. Oh. Then after that, my brother started to bleed, you know, and then drove the car home. That's when my mother called me. Uh, your brother is hurt. So I said, what? He said, you cannot stop the blood. So I said, call the ambulance. So I drove where I was living at Palolo Valley all the way to Odd Lane. When I reached Odd Lane, I saw blood all over the bed, the steps, all the way to the car, you know. And I told uh, the neighbors, where, what hospital? They say St. Francis. When I went over there, and my brother was in the emergency room, that's when he told me the whole story, what, I said, what had happened. Oh, that's terrible. I'm and then he passed away, you know, at 10 a.m., 10.30 a.m. Master, when did you first move to Hawaii with your family? 
Oh, I didn't move. I born there. Oh, you were born there? Your yeah. parents were born in the Philippines. Yeah, I was born in Hawaii. What was your first involvement in the martial arts, and who were your teachers? Well, at first I got involved in judo. Mm -hmm. I learned this judo from Taneo. It's one of the, my neighbors. And in turn, I teach him boxing. You know, oh. we had a, a, a group of teenage guys who call ourselves the Odd Lane Gang, you know. <laughs> and that, that's how we traded, you know. Yeah. And when did you start uh, seriously in the martial arts? Oh, when I was about uh, 20 years old, 21, 21. Yeah. What was your first system? No, well, okay. <clears throat> I, I, uh, I was introduced to this art by my brother-in-law. Mm -hmm. His name is uh, Walter Wood. He said, hey, Nonoi, uh, you know, that's my nickname. You, you saw this art? I thought, what? He said, Kempo. I thought, what is that? <laughs> he said, oh, Kempo is, is, is uh, it's uh, at, uh, Okinawa. I said, nah. He said, well, I'm going, I'm going to show you who the guy that learned this. So, uh -huh. uh, I went over, I watched this guy, you know, he punching the bucky wacky ball, punching. Yes. So I look, and he had the uh, uh, bullet bag around mm -hmm. the, the board. So I, I figured it was easy. So I tell the guy, well, let me try. But when I scoop him, it, it took the skin out of my hand, <laughs> my, my knuckles, uh, wow. And the guy just keep in hitting, and he, he built calluses. His name was Freddy Laura. So I tell me, uh, where you learn this? He, the technique and all this. He said, oh, from Professor Charles. I said, oh, can I go look at the school? He said, yeah. That night he had training. The school was at the CYO Catholic school, uh, gym, mm -hmm. and on 4th Street. You know that Catholic uh, church? Yes. All right, uh, it's, it's a big church in Honolulu. Uh, and they, they had the uh, training hall right upstairs the CYO gym, it's mm -hmm. a Catholic youth organization. So I went there, that's where he had a school. But the school was uh, first introduced at the Kaheka gym by Professor Mitosi. I see. And uh, Chow was one of Professor Mitosi's students. And, the, and, they were, and this was the Kempo style? Right. Is this Strictly Okinawa Kempo? Kempo? Strictly Kempo. So when I saw what, what they were doing, yeah, I kind of liked that. <laughs> so I joined. Oh, I, I trained hard, yeah, I, I had dirty leaking, you know, <laughs> trained hard. Then after <clears throat> we moved from there to uh, Kaheka Gym, mm -hmm. that's where uh, a lot of these famous guys like Sam Luke had his school, and uh, Mitosi had his school uh, over there too, you yeah. know, and that's where I started to learn, that's where I uh, in, uh, got advanced and involved in art. So yeah. did you get your black belt in Kempo? Oh yeah, from uh, I got my black belt and I stayed with Chow till I became fifth degree in 1950. I see. Is it now? Is this Okinawan Kempo or Chinese Kempo? Uh, Chinese Kempo. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And what happened after that? When did you start to develop? Okay. Your after system? that, I I had a good friend. His name was. Uh, he's he's still my friend. What I call uh, his name is. Frank Ordonez. Mm -hmm. He said, hey, uh, brah, <clears throat> I got a couple of guys who want to come by and learn your art. I said, who were they? He told me, oh, uh, Joe Ho, uh, himself, and Clarence Chang, and uh, he said, you know, uh, Walter Chu. Oh, where, where do you want to learn? First, we started to train at Walter Chu house in the backyard at the Demon Track. Now Demon Track is already broken down. It became a street of used cars and all kind of business uh, establishment. So we started to train there. Then he says, hey, why don't we all join together and form one organization? So I thought, man, you guys think about it, what organiza organization? Excuse me. Then a couple of weeks later, they all came to my house. I was living at uh, Halava Veteran Housing. Mm -hmm. So they came over and they told me, hey, uh, we came up in the knee. Because of Peter Y.Y. Chu knows Korean Karate, Tang Sudo. I see. And Joe Hook and Frank Oranes know Judo and Jiu Jitsu. And you know Kenpo. And Clarence Chang know, uh, Clarence Chang know uh, Chinese boxing. We name it Kaju Kenpo. Oh, I see. So we all made a pact. Hey, right on. Okay. <laughs> 
We all, what we can do, we go develop one, one unique technique, all our technique put together, you know? Mm -hmm. All right, so what are we gonna do? We say we're gonna train every day and every night. We're gonna train, we change different location, and, you know, we keep it a secret. I see. All right, we train here one night, we train here night. Nobody go to work. Or how are we gonna make up? We go welfare. <laughs> you know, we go welfare, <laughs> and you know, we, right. we stretch our food together. And we did it to 47 to 49. We, we, we suffered and all that. Yeah. Then after that, when we completed that, we started to spread out. I mean, uh, what do you call, separated. Peter Y. Y. Chu joined the army. He became the Korean intelligence, you know? Uh -huh. And then uh, uh, Frank Orenes got a job as a supervisor in the telephone company, Hawaiian uh -huh. Telephone Company. And uh, Kevin Chang joined the army. He got killed in the uh, Korean War. Mm -hmm. And me, I'm still here. So, Master, you're the only one in the group that kept developing Kaju Kempo. Right. Uh, you see, after the, the Kaju Kempo was developed, some got married. We started to separate it, you know? I see. We already did our thing in developing the technique. But who was the one who was supposed to carry on uh -huh. the work? Uh, of Kaju Kembo and that system. So I look at them guys, they, they, they're not carrying on, you know? Mm -hmm. So because the guys like well, uh, Joe Hook joined the National Guard, Peter Chu joined the Army, became an intelligent. Uh, Joe Hook became a major in the Army, you know, something like that. Clarence, uh, Clarence Chang died, you know, mm -hmm. in the war. Mm -hmm. And me, I'm the only one, so I opened my school in 1950 at Paloma Settlement. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's when I had only guys I chose to be in the school was, the first group was from Pan American World Airways. That's where I was working. I see. And when I got a job, after the art was developed. So the first students I had there was my brother Joe, Marino T. Wonette, uh, uh, Walter Chong, uh, Walter Lee, Ben Lau, and uh, Stanley Machida, and his young nep and the nephew Machida. I had about maybe 10, 10 students. I didn't want no more. Mm -hmm. So that's how I started to train them. And at the same time, Professor Chow had his school at the Nuano YMCA where me and my brother used to go over and help him teach class, mm -hmm. you know? <clears throat> and uh, that's where Kaju Kembo started to grow from Palama Sediment. Tell me, what is unique about Kaju Kembo? Tell me about the techniques. Well, the technique is not only uh, from standing position, it has a combination of uh, a fighting uh, position, like street fighting, mm -hmm. Then you have your uh, throwing technique. Then you have your ground technique. It's a follow-up combination. You know what I mean? When you hit the guy, you don't expect him to stand there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hey, when you hit the guy, boom, you follow up with the throwing. You, you go right through it and you finish him up on the ground. That's what's unique about it. It's not like uh, some other art. You just block and you ah! And that's it. You figure the guy going to be there. No way. Yeah. You, you hit the guy in the groin. You gotta, hey, you figure the guy is going down, that's where he's supposed to go. You lay him down, you lay him flat out. That's what Kaju Kembo is. You start him, let's say the guy start him, you give him the works and you finish him off. I see. <laughs> now, <laughs> hey. now, Master, you uh, mentioned the people that helped develop the system. Yeah. But what do you feel you did to the system? Really I made it grow. It. I made it grow and became, I, made, I developed good instructors. I made it grow and I made these instructors to spread out like octopus, spread it out to How the How did world. it spread out from Hawaii? What happened? Oh, because I made instructors after my second group and third group came in. It was like uh, Ale Alejo Reyes. Then you have uh, uh, Tony Ramos, Charles Gaylord. Then you have uh, Al Da Coscos, mm -hmm. and you have uh, uh, John Leone. Did you send them to America? Or? Yeah. Okay, the guys that went to America was Alejo Reyes, mm -hmm. Tony Ramos, 
Aldo Coscos, Gaylord, and John Leone. How big, and Hal Buna. How big is Kaja Campo today? Kaja Campo is located throughout the world. It's so big. Uh, they have a school all over the world that instructors that carrying Kaja Campo name there and teaching Kaja Campo system have never even seen me or met me. It's that big, huh? That big. Do you hope to one day get to them? <laughs> I hope so I can dig them out, you know? <laughs> you travel all over the world. Well, I travel all, as, all over the world. I've been traveling to Canada, Spain, and uh, I hope to go to Germany where they say, no, not Germany, Italy. I Next, where I, uh, <clears throat> news came to me, they said they have 10,000 Kaju Campbell followers there. Wow. It's okay. just like in Spain. I just got back from Spain. We have 1,500 followers and 25 black belt Kaju Campbell, all loyal and faithful. The man that run the thing there in Spain is Angel Soldado Garcia. Mm -hmm. He's my official delegate and official instructor there. How do you feel seeing your system just grow like this? Well, I, it's just like a dad seeing his sons grow, you know? Yeah. Oh, right on, good boy, bad boy, <laughs> all kind, you know? Yeah. Did you ever expect it to be this big? No, I just figured it going to be just small, Palama sediment. That's what I wanted. I didn't know. I didn't know it was going to be like an octopus, you know. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, Master, what is uh, required to be a black belt in Kajikampo? Well, you gotta let's say to become a black belt, you gotta get at least three to five years of hard training. Mm -hmm. And when I used to teach at Palama sediment, we used to train maybe two to five hours and it's maybe four to five days a week and wow. the fee was two dollars a month that's pretty reasonable oh. <laughs> wow two dollars a month and them guys can't even pay me two dollars how you like that <laughs> well, <laughs> well, well they must have joke. bought you a beer yeah. no but <laughs> these guys today they pay 40 50 dollars yeah and i'm there looking at them <laughs> wow they're not teaching what i'm teaching yeah. And they're paying that amount of money. I go, see this great, man. Uh, but that's okay. Master, tell me, what does it take to become a black belt in Kaja Kempo? Well, it takes maybe, you know, like um, three to five years to become a black belt. Mm -hmm. But in during those times, you have to come train all the time. You I know? see. And, and uh, you got to know your basic, mm -hmm. your farm. And most of all, I trust on self-defense techniques. I see. Right. <clears throat> self-defense techniques and sparring, you know. You see, in, in Hawaii before, they never had no, no tournament, no nothing. So I came up with this sparring technique in Palama Sediment in the 50s. Uh -huh. So I started to train them. Mm -hmm. And no protection, just, just heat. <laughs> and I'm not satisfied until I see blood on the floor. Then that's when I said, oh, tonight we had good training, you know. I have to see blood on the floor. And, you know, they used to come and say, wow, you guys are killer art. You guys, you maim that person. You, oh, they write you know, all, all bad things about me, you know, yeah. in a magazine and all that. Mm -hmm. But to become a good black belt, you got to know how to protect yourself in self-defense and to know how to use it, but not to show anybody what you learn. We have a code of ethics, you know. Where if you ever catch you outside teaching anybody, the whole class go over there and beat you up. Mm. That was in the olden days. Yeah. Yeah. And then at those times, there was only three schools. Mm -hmm. Professor Young, Professor Chow, and mine. See, when I had a school in Palama Sermon, this guy, his name was Woodrow McCandless. Mm -hmm. He was a black belt under Mitosi and Professor Chow. When he came over and watched my school, he heard I had my school, he saw the technique. It was entirely different from Kenpo. Uh -huh. So he looked at me, he go, wow. Can I come uh, visit you again? I said, yeah. So he came the next time he watched. Then he came up to me and he told me, can I learn? I thought, oh, come on, no fool around, Mac. His name was Woodrow McCandless. I call him Mac. Eh, hey, no fool around. Hey, you, you more advanced than me. Thought, no, no, no. I like the system you, you teach it. What do you call it? Then I told him, Kaju Kimbo. He said, I like join, I like learn. So uh, that was one of the advanced students of Mitosi and Chow. Uh -huh. Come to me and tell me he want to learn my system. So I said, okay, fine. 
but you and I are even in rank. I respect you as I am, and you respect me, you know. <clears throat> so he started to learn. He got into the line. And that's when I had my second group. The second group consists of Ben Kikomu, uh, Woodrow McCandless, Benny Madaris, uh, <clears throat> uh, that? Antokis, all this Manini Charisma. Those are the guys that my brother Joe was teaching on a side in, in private. Mm -hmm. They go to the house, they suck them up, and then they, they, <laughs> they practice up. And what I teach my brother, not to teach anybody, he goes and teach them, you know? Oh, I see. <laughs> and my brother was blue and green belt at that time in the 50s. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was 50 green, black belt. <clears throat> so in order to become a good black belt, Everybody had to stick together and say, one for all and all for one. Right. We don't trust nobody. Hey, it was a locked door thing. Right. You knock my door, hey, what do you want? Oh, I want to, okay, sorry, okay, this is private lesson. You know, I see. Something like that. Mm -hmm. And we, in the Palama district, in Kali, and Hall Street, and Lilia Street, there was, you know, it's a rugged place. You call yeah. it just like uh, Market Street here in San Diego. Uh -huh. oh, drunks and yeah. pool room, prostitute and everything. And uh, when you look at that, wow, what the hell has we got here today? So what we try to do is get the, the, the teenagers off the street and teach, come join Palama Serum and learn. Mm -hmm. And that's what we've been doing. I see. And then, then all those rugged guys that uh, like to beat up sailors and soldiers, they became good Kaju Kimbo people mm -hmm. and they realized what had happened, you know, what, what's happening. Master, what makes a good karate instructor? Oh, he teaches discipline at school, teaches loyalty, and most of all, to respect everybody. Mm -hmm. Whether he's a martial artist, most of all his parents, you know, mm -hmm. and the teacher. The teacher has the last word to say. And what makes a good Kajikempo student? Make me all, you gotta be, what, whatever the example of the teacher show. I see. If he's a bad teacher, hey, the, te the student going to be bad too, you know? He's going to follow the teacher. So you got to show yourself as humble mm -hmm. and being intelligent and uh, do a lot of talking, you know, instead of just by hand, but give him some uh, word of advice, wise word. How is Kaji Kempo different today than the rough old days? Well, Kaji Kempo today, is pretty good because yeah. they had, you know, I have never given my instructors uh, restriction. I always say, try to be creative. Mm -hmm. If you say you want to develop something good and you see it's good, put it in the system. Boy, that's unique because today the instructor says, do it this way right. or nothing. Right. And then... Uh, Me, I'm, I'm creative. Hey, this is a free country, man. <laughs> you don't restrict. Hey, this is not Bushido. Japanese or Korea. This is America. America is a free land. Hey, you want to want to do this? You go ahead, do it. We're not living in a communist world, mm -hmm. right? So if this guy said, see Joe, how about this technique? I look at it, good, put it in your Nothing wrong with that. I say, if you can develop anymore, fine, that's being creative. That's how I want my instructors to be creative, always thinking, mm -hmm. not being just one way one straightforward way and backwards, no way. If we were to be like that, we'd be like zombies and yeah. robots, not, not Kaju Kimbo people. They get a mind of their own, they can think. And I, when I said being creative, that's the way I want them to be. Like Gary Forbeck here, he's a very good instructor, very good teacher, very patient, and he's very creative. That's mm -hmm. the way. I have a lot of good instructors, in the Kaju Kembo system and a lot of bad instructors in the Kaju Kembo system. Well, <laughs> that's the way life is. Yeah. Everybody cannot be good, you know? Mm -hmm. Some like to put me down yeah. because, oh, they wish they was in my spot. I wish I could have been the, the founder and creator, you know? Mm -hmm. But you take like, oh, that guy there, wow, he's something else. What's wrong? Oh, he cannot wait to be promoted. He like to promote himself to ninth degree. He like to forge diplomas and, and what they call sell them with my name on, you know, rubber stamp. Mm. Oh, that's the kind of guys that talk about me in Kaju Kimbo, 
but they lower themselves down when they talk about me because they forget I'm the teacher. Mm -hmm. Whenever they talk about me, they're supposed to think of themselves first. Before they talk about the teacher, oh, I'm, t I'm talking about myself because I'm lowering my teacher down, I'm lowering myself down, and I'm lowering the Kaju Kembo system down. Mm -hmm. And that I don't take, I don't, I, I don't, I don't want to say any of I want to use vulgar language, you know. Okay. <laughs> Well, Master, whatever happens, they have to always come back to you. And well, you know how they say, the yin and the yang, always right. the thing turn around. around. Yeah, right. Around. So, let me ask you, in the street, if someone's attacking you, what, what is your favorite technique against them? Oh, I have lots. <laughs> plenty. Is there any you favorite? What do you want? You want me to show you a sample here? No, no, no. Oh, no, wow. No, 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 not to oh, well, <laughs> I, could, I could show you a technique in seconds. You don't have to learn that, how to put a man down and just knock him out. But is there one technique that's more effective than another? Oh, is yeah, all different ways. What's Depends how thing? you've been attacked. Attack. Oh, let's say somebody swings a club at your head. What would you do? Oh, uh, well, first thing I would go, where's the weakest spot in a man? He's growing. Yeah. Well, but you hit him right down there. Well, he's going down. He's going to double up, grab, grab his groin, down like that. And then I come for him. Just so that he don't make any sound one time for the truth, you know? Groin and throat area. Right, and then because automatically when you go down like that, his hand is grabbing, his groin is got hurt. Mm -hmm. His throat is a juicy spot to see without so that he <laughs> cannot call for help. One hit there, you kill a man because he broke the throat, he strangled himself to death, right? Or one palm right on the nose, shoved them bone right to the head, you know? Right to <laughs> the brain. You know, I think, oh, one heat like that on a forearm, you know, on a face, something like that, man. Oh, master. Or on the neck, yeah. Do you ever have any fear of being oh. attacked? What, what that? Do you ever fear being attacked? Oh, I don't fear nobody. Mm. As long as I know the man, I can see him. But what you got to fear most is fear itself. That's true. That's an old yeah. saying, but true, well, isn't you're it? Scared. Oh, you walk in here, well, I'm scared of the dark room. <laughs> I look in the mirror, oh, a toe. That's what you mean, you know? <laughs> well, I thought you were somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but yeah. truth, truthfully, <laughs> when you learn the system of Kanjo Kimbo, you, you, you find a change in you. Wow, I know what I can do to this man. I, I don't want to hurt this man. I don't want to. Maybe he's a married man. Mm -hmm. I cripple his man. He can't go to work. The wife and children suffer. Yeah. You know what I mean? No restrictions. Yeah. So, hey, the only time you use this technique, it's self-defense. Self-defense means self-defense. The dictionary says to protect oneself, yourself. Mm -hmm. It's not to go out to show demonstration. It's not to go out to teach anybody. But Self-defense is a system where you learn to protect yourself, your loved one, and your country. I see. And Gary, tell us, what's it like to have a master like Mr. Emperado as a teacher? <laughs> I gotta talk straight, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's exciting, and it's, it's an honor. More than anything, it's an honor. I was lucky, I trained with one master of his Reyes, students, right. Grand Master Aleo Reyes, the late Master Aleo Reyes. Uh -huh. And I know how he felt about Siju, and, and now that he's gone, then I, you know, I, it's an honor to me just to even know the man, but let alone to become be able to love him and, and to be loved by him and to represent him, it's an honor. I bet yeah. you he's a pretty tough teacher, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Understatement of the year, right? <laughs> he's a living legend. I know, I know. I you see, I don't go around to other schools and say, oh, I have a better system than you, hey, y'all. Whatever school I go, I always respect because martial art, everybody that learned the art is supposed to be brothers of the same art. Yes. No, go, I don't go over and criticize this, oh, your technique is done. Whether it's Aikido, Judo, or what, if the man learned 40 years of Aikido, and this guy learned two years of Karate, I think the 40 years can beat the guy because he disciplined himself. Discipline, clear mind, and he's strong internally. So you get one guy, just two years, just one bragger, big mouth. Don't tell me the experience is not going to overcome the strong. Right. It's got to take experience. Okay. Right.
Master, what do you think of uh, martial arts today in the 1980s? Well, for one thing, when I came to the United States, I see a lot of schools open. Wow. Then I look, well, it's commercialized. And the amount of fee they charge by contract yeah. or, or whatever, you know, the private license, $150 an hour. Wow. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I don't even, I even charge $5 or $10. <laughs> yeah. My students get hard time paying me two dollars a month and uh, five days training and then hundred. But it was a maze to me. But yeah. today, a lot of the martial art is commercialized, and uh, the instructor is not there teaching the student himself. They have somebody else teaching. Mm -hmm. See, it's just like a big business now. Yeah. Oh, in other words, hey, I pay you seven hundred dollars a month. You go teach them. He's the, the main instructor is too busy going around collecting money and smiling to the bank. Yeah. It's not my way. You, you want to come train? My, not me, today. You come train after 4 o'clock, I teach you self-defense. That's where I have my school, in the backyard where I live with Vince Black. Mm -hmm. He's a master himself. Master of Shing He, Kaju Kembo, Tai Chi, and uh, Iskrima and Kali, Vincent Black. Oh. And uh, that man, Nobody know how his form is or what. Only I see myself. Mm -hmm. I know, and I know what I'm talking about. A lot of guys, they criticize him because they don't know. They wish they could know, but that man, he's not a, he's not a show off man. He's a humble man. Look at the way he walk around, barefooted. <laughs> he don't even have there. money to buy razor blade to shave. <laughs> but that, that's not the point. Uh, see. Okay. Let me ask you. How do you feel about children in the martial arts? Children, it's all right to learn martial arts. How old do you think they should start? Well, they get, okay, it's good to uh, uh, teach them maybe eight, seven years old, mm -hmm. seven, eight years old. I would rather teach a uh, 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 children when they're seven years old because according to the law, that's when they know they would accept any children's statement saying, uh, right or wrong, from seven above, right? Uh -huh. All right. When you teach a martial art, I would suggest judo first. Judo? Yeah. Why? To, because, you know, the throwing technique and rough and tumble. Because when you fight in school, it's rough and tumble, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then, if you you go and teach a student uh, karate or what, you tell them poke the eye, kick the balls. When they go in school, they don't know how effective and deadly is. You kick the guy there and you hurt him, you cripple him for life, hey, the kid don't know. Yeah, That's control. when the school get in trouble. You know I what see. I mean? Yeah. But if you explain to them that you're not supposed to do this and that, how can you control it when they're out of your school? Right. So my best suggestion is to teach them boxing, judo, and then when they become of a little bit of age when they understand where it hurts, then you teach them karate. Do you think karate is more devastating than uh, boxing or judo? I wouldn't say. I would say all art are devastating mm -hmm. the way you apply it. Right. Control. Hey, judo can be so effective. You don't know how to throw it. Take a fall, you go down, give you the choke hold, you're dead. Mm -hmm. They give you an arm lock, broke your arm. Yeah. Aikido, the same thing, you know. Uh, boxing, the same thing. A lot of guys get killed in the ring. Street fighter, worse. Yeah. Hey, they rough and tumble, bite your nose off, bite your ear off, kick you in the nuts and everything. Same thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Master, what are your goals? And uh, today? My goal today is to see all my instructors teach my technique throughout the world, teach my philosophy, what is, how to become a good Kaju Kimbo man. Like all this. Uh, famous Gaijin Funakushi. I used to teach. I I taught Kenneth Funakushi. Yeah. Yeah. Gaijin Funakushi, grandson, and he told me, "Oh, Sijo, uh, you know, my grandfather died. Can I go and uh, carry on his teaching? By all means, with my blessing." But he used his grandfather forms and uh, tech uh, forms like that. But when it comes to self-defense, it's Kaju Kimbo. You don't see no Japanese thing in there. <laughs> right. Same like Paul Yamaguchi. Uh -huh. See? Gage, uh, the cat grandson. Yeah. I taught him too. Wow. See, all these guys. A lot of guys. 
take him to my school and learn for two weeks. This guy, uh, Henry Papa, one of my instructors, brought him over. He was in a Coast Guard knee, you know, Coast Guard. Mm -hmm. He came over and learned. He couldn't take the training too hard. So he went to join Professor Chow. It guys like that, see? Like Mass Oyama come to my school. <clears throat> he look. When George Shimabukuro told him, oh, sensei, uh, because I wanted to go spa with him. He said, hey, I wouldn't advise that because <laughs> if I can, cannot take emperor training and I can take your training, you know what it means. <laughs> so, Maso Yamalu, oh, say, yeah. Oh, oh uh, next time, next time. And then they, they went, you know. Things like that, hey. I got a lot of famous guys that was in my school, but I don't brag about it. I don't mm -hmm. talk about it. And today, they're a living legend, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, sometime in January next year, uh, Vincent Black and I will go back to Hawaii. We're going to take pictures of where I was born, where I was raised up, where I opened my, own, my school in Palama Sediment, where I learned uh, Kenpo, all that place, all that location, because I'm making an autobiography of my life. Oh. You know, for a book. And uh, at least when I leave, anybody want to read the truth about Wow, see Joe, uh, his life, history, and all that. I think it's going to be a sellout. Yeah. And how many schools did you have in Hawaii? In Hawaii, I had, okay, I had, I had three schools. Palama Salmon was the first. Mm -hmm. Then came uh, Wahewa YMCA. That's where Tony Ramos learned. Oh. And <clears throat> I made four black belts there. Tony Ramos, Jerry Martin, Richie Tokomoro, and um, one more, Richard, oh, Jerry Martin, oh, Joe Black. Uh -huh. Okay, those were the four black belts in Hawaii, I mean in uh, Waiawa YMCA. Mm -hmm. In Kamuki YMCA, I had uh, Paul Cironio running the school there, and Gaylord was his assistant, mm -hmm. Charlie Gaylord. Mm -hmm. All right, Charlie Gaylord is now in Mel Peters in California. He has a big school, you know. He called himself Professor Gaylord. Mm. I didn't promote him, <laughs> but he called him, well, whatever, you know. If they're happy with being professor, fine. <laughs> Everybody can be professor. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then my main school was Palama Sediment. Then the Marines came <coughs> from Kaneo and Marine Base. They wanted me to go there and teach. So I had all whatever instructors I had go and teach about 300 Marines at a time, you know? No kidding. Yeah. And then after that, Willow Field, Air Force Base, they called me to go there and teach. Oh, I had, hey, I had a big, you know, uh, a popular uh, self-defense system that everybody looked and they said, wow, this is down to earth. Mm -hmm. That's the kind I like. And you know the Marines? Oh, they like that when I beat them up, you know? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Will appeal. The the officers there, they like that, but they broken ribs, broken arm, yeah. and they had to close it down because they couldn't perform their duties. You know. Oh <laughs> uh, wow! My, the guys that bust them up was from the Waiwa, Tony Ramos, Joe Black, Peter, uh, Richie Tokomoro, and Pedro Martin. Those were the top uh, four guys in Waiwa. Same like Kamuki, but Palama was the main one. Mm -hmm. When there was promotion, all the school would come down, and that's where I promote them. Palama Sadamin, because that's, that's the route. I see. Master, when someone's promoted in your system, are you the one who issues the black belt certificates? Oh, I issue them genuine black belt certificate, not the kind of certificate where as you, you sign them. My certificate, certificate is registered by the state of Hawaii. Oh. And what year did you move, uh, leave Hawaii? I left, oh, uh, did last year, January, uh, February. And you're living in San Diego now? Yeah, because you see, I was kind of, I had a lot of problem, domestic, and I wasn't feeling too well. Mm -hmm. I had open heart surgery, you know, and all oh. that. So Vince Black is an oriental, oriental medical doctor, mm -hmm. acupuncturist, and herb. He's registered by the state of California, and he belonged to the Acupuncture Association of Hawaii. So he offered to take care of me. Oh. 
So oh, nice. he plane by plane, my, my wife and I plane for airport, and that's where we're staying. We're living with him, and he's taking good care of me. How you feel now? Oh, a little bit, you know, kind of strong, a little bit here. He giving me the right herbs. Yeah. I don't feel too much pain like before. Mm -hmm. But I'm still kicking, as you can see. I'm still here talking to your people, right? <laughs> and you'll be here a long time to come, I'll tell and you. You know what? Don't underestimate me, man. I might overleave you. <laughs> <laughs> I got lo I got ten people, all country came of faithful instructors. They all they all passed away, but I'm still here kicking. <laughs> Master, uh, Gary's just completed some videos on the system. Well, Gary is a very good student. He's faithful and loyal. He's trying to please me. He's trying to do everything he can because of his teacher, because his teacher was Alejo Reyes. He was my secretary, uh -huh. and he was my closest companion. And every place I go, he goes with me because of my, of my handicap of hard of hearing. Mm -hmm. So he don't want nobody pulling over a bull over my eyes. So he makes sure everything is done correctly. Mm -hmm. How do you uh, feel the videos can help the students? I figure, all right, the first step now is here, Gary Forbeck. Mm -hmm. He's promoting this Kaju Kimbo system. And I know what Gary is showing on the, the film is a true Kaju Kimbo forms and, and techniques. And not only that, uh, if you are a Kaju Kimbo follower, try to be creative yourself. Be truthful and honest to yourself. Uh, <clears throat> any question you want to ask, you can reach me. You can just call Gary Fall back. You know where I live. Master, please tell us about your Kaju Kimbo Association. What is the name of it? OK, <clears throat> the Kaju Kimbo. Okay, it's the Kaju Kimbo Self-Defense Institute Incorporated. Now what I want to do is form the Kaju, World Kaju Kimbo Association, where people like in Germany, Italy, Greece, Pakistan, uh, uh, Okinawa, where we have schools, Spain, all over the world can join into this association to make it the World Kaju Kimbo. It's a strong organization. Mm -hmm. Right now, <clears throat> it's just beginning to work and form. We have the power and the people out throughout the world, but it's just that somebody got to get off the fence and start working on it. So through this association, you'll be able to control the quality of the system? The quality of the system, and not only that, that this system will live forever a long time. I see. You know? And the, what if somebody is from a different school. Let's say they're studying Taekwondo. And they oh, they want to learn? They want to become Kaju Kempo. What happens? What's the procedure? Oh, all you have to do is join. Hey, what you learn on your system, fine. Keep it to yourself. Oh. You come to learn mine, fine. I have no restriction. Only thing, make sure you show respect. Yes. Respect and honor and loyalty. And be honest with yourself. That's all. Gary, is there anything you'd like to add about the uh, benefits of the association? Uh, one of the main benefits is the the tapes, a series of tapes that we just got through completing for CJ's benefit. What they contain are basic techniques taught to me by Grandmaster Leila Reyes, the late Grandmaster Leila Reyes, who, as CJ said, trained with him in Hawaii and was his good companion. Mm -hmm. The idea behind the tapes is not to say that any school is teaching the wrong thing because they're all creative and, and through his teaching. The idea with the tapes is to create a foundation of teaching so that we all are able to learn from the same knowledge and then be creative after that but it's like learning uh, to speak you have to learn your alphabets first right. then you put everything together so the idea with the tapes is if a school in as you just said germany or czechoslovakia poland he has schools all over the world would like to really come under him now because there's so many associations and it's all like a bucket of worms right now they can come directly under the siju himself now through these tapes they can learn they can incorporate the basics so he he knows that at least they have these basics Mm -hmm. Then they can be creative. Then they can come through the tapes, through the World Kaju Kimbo Association for certification and recognition by him. Fantastic. Now, you refer to the master as Sijo? Sijo. What, 
Uh, is that a Chinese or Japanese word? It's a Chinese, uh, let's say, like, Ishijo means the founder and creator of the Kaju Kenbo system. So it's a little different than Sifu. Sifu means teacher. Oh, Sijo means creator. Right. Sigun means master. I see. Sijo means the creator and founder. What's wrong with that? <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Master, how do you want to be remembered in the martial arts? Well, I want to be remem remembered when I pass through this beautiful land and go meet the uh, man up there. I want to rem be remembered like to the states, to the books, and to my students, instructors here. And I know as long as Kaju Kembo is still alive in this country and throughout the world, I'll still be alive. Master, I thank you very much for stopping by today, and you too, Gary. And, I'm and sure you know I what? Uh, I like to say wholeheartedly, to what kind of form you learn, or what kind of art you learn, or whatever, do it good. Don't do it sloppy or any kind of way. Try to be creative, and try to be an example of your teacher. I'm talking to the students. And you, as instructors, try to be an example so that your student can follow. You know what I mean, brah? Aloha. Thank you, Master. <laughs> Thank you very much.